Our Alex Jones defamation trial continues. A plaintiff's in defense giving their closing arguments. Now all that remains is a rebuttal argument by the plaintiffs. Then a Connecticut jury will decide how much Jones should pay after calling the 2012 Sandy Hook massacre a hoax. Let's get you right out to Jamal Andres for the details in this. So Jamal, what did we hear exactly during closing arguments? Yeah, yeah, well, Veronica, look, this case in a lot of ways mirrors what we saw in Austin, Texas, a couple months ago. And so we heard a lot of the same themes here, things like Jones made calculated decisions here, that this was not happenstance in any way, that Jones continues to spread lies about these families to this day. That was another point we heard at several uh, moments during these closing arguments, and that Jones directly benefited financially from spreading lies specifically about Sandy Hook. You know, at one point, they showed the users and session views and page views that came in the month following what happened at Sandy Hook and following these broadcasts specifically about Sandy Hook, essentially saying that Jones continued to keep this lie up because it was benefiting him financially. Unlike the Texas case, though, there are so many families involved here, you know, 15 plaintiffs here in this case representing eight victims of what happened at Sandy Hook. And we heard from each of those plaintiffs throughout this case. Most of those families were in the courtroom. And, you know, the plaintiff's attorneys used that to their advantage throughout this trial. Here's one moment during the closing argument that I want to play for you that showed the, the volume of people that were in this case and how the attorneys used that to their advantage. Watch. They hate America. They are congenital frauds. They literally have been trained to hate the country and to hate you and your family. They are the enemy of the American people. That's the message. And who is he demonizing? Who is he saying are the enemies of America that his audience is at war with? These people. And his audience gets it. For the defense, though, again, it was a lot of the same themes that we heard in that Austin, Texas trial. Uh, first of all, that Jones is not directly responsible for the actions of others, essentially saying that the plaintiffs have not met their burden of linking what Jones said to the harassment that these families received. Also, that Jones has sent those moments disavowed his early words and that those uh, disavows, disavowments are not being acknowledged here. And lastly, uh, that his First Amendment rights are being attacked. Now, one of the things that I think is going to be interesting to watch here is whether the jury uh, can, can put aside the really powerful testimony that they've heard throughout. You know, the defense during its closing asked this jury to make a dispassionate decision, render a dispassionate verdict. But the jury is made up of people just like you and me, many of those who have kids, I'm sure. And so the idea that they remove that kind of passion from this case is going to be difficult. You know, at one point, this surprised me. At one point, the defense during the closing argument said, uh, it is a fair question whether these families have over-exaggerated uh, some of the harm that has been done to them. And obviously, you know, these are family members who lost the most precious thing uh, any of us have, uh, and that's, that's a child. And so uh, there are, there, I think that in particular uh, uh, could have potentially struck the jury in a strange way. But we'll have to see exactly where this jury comes down. Yeah, this is a case that has been 10 years in the making, Jamal, so it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Jamal Andrews reporting live for us. Jamal, we appreciate the update on this. Thank you.